So again, my name is Lois Teiskal. I'm working at Red Hat, 13 years in the software engineering, seven years as a QE, four years as a developer in Red Hat, and one year as a team leader and developer. Uh, my team, I have three developers, two are in Israel, one in India, five QEs also in India, one documentation person, right now we have also an intern, and me, so my team is quite small, I'm not like manager of 50 people. Before I start, I just want to say it's my personal experience, uh, I will have 10 or 11 lessons learned, if you will not agree with me and you will say, hey, this is bullshit, I don't agree, that's perfectly fine. It's my personal experience as a developer who never <coughs> did any kind of team leading managing, so yeah, I'm still learning, I'm still making mistakes. So, first thing, what I learned, less coding. If you think that you will be able to develop or do any kind of technical stuff as before, you are mistaken. Do not expect to deliver the same amount of the code as before. You will have new responsibilities, new stuff. So if coding or doing your technical stuff is the one thing that you really love and you want to do, don't take a team leader a job. You know, just to be sure, just be really sure that uh, you will have less time, less coding, and less opportunities to do the technical stuff and be more people person. The second thing is that if you have small team as I do and you are the only senior there, you're gonna have bad time. You need at least one senior team who will help you to lead the team, answer the, not the lead the team, answer the question, help with the reviews or do the actual work. It's very, very hard to lead the team, help the QEs, documentation, and everyone, and be the only one who has the senior level in your team. So again, if you are the only senior in the team, you're gonna have bad time, and you need at least one more. Oh yes, asking questions. If you ask someone in your team, and they say, oh yes, I understand, oh yes, I know, it absolutely doesn't mean anything. You need to learn how to ask questions. <coughs> so do not say, do you understand, but ask about the topic, about the problem, about the task that they are going to work on. If they are going to implement some new feature, ask about the behavior of the feature, what kind of tools are they going to use, and so on. If they don't know the answer, they will immediately realize that there is some lack of the knowledge they need to learn and they will learn it or they will ask more questions. Um, one thing is that what you need to uh, consider is that, as I said, I have few people in India, in Israel, and in their culture it's not really normal to, how to say, ask you know someone on the higher positions or questioning some decisions, stuff like that. So. When you tell them, hey, you need to ask me more, you need to say no or I don't know more, it might be a problem for them. So consider the culture, consider the seniority when you have new team member in the team and they are not, you know, they don't have the knowledge of the software, the domain, anything. It might be a little bit hard for them to ask the question. So you need to take that into consideration. And yes, my favorite is connectivity problems. When you are on the, your local network, connecting to the VPN, and you have called to the India, you will have connection problems. So make sure that they really understand what you said, because yeah, we are in 2024 and we still have problems with having meetings online. So consider the seniority, culture, uh, the new members, connections, and so on. So yes, next one. Uh, Asking questions. Yes, this is follow up to the previous one. It took me six months to learn to teach everyone in the team that it's perfectly fine to ask questions about basically anything. It takes time, you need to teach them, you need to create, let's say, safe environment, this kind of stuff. But basically it's way better to have 
people who are asking about everything, then at the end of the release saying, oh yeah, I didn't know how to do it, so it's not working. You need to teach them asking questions. When they feel safe to ask questions, they will work better, hopefully. Uh, oh yeah, no, it's a full sentence. Learn it to say it. Uh, you can say no to some ideas. You need to start saying no to your managers. You need to say, start saying no to basically anything. Uh, yeah, th this is not just for the team lead. This is like perfectly for your life, all right? It's a full sentence, use it. Uh, delegate. This was very difficult for me, but you actually don't have to do everything. You really don't. There is a stuff that can be done by anyone else that you can split into the team. And also, you can deliver, you can learn to deliver work through your team. I'll give you the example. You are sitting two hours with your colleague and you are talking about the feature. You're explaining the code, you are explaining the current domain. And then after two hours, the person says, oh yeah, perfect. I know how to do it. That's also work. It's not like you lost two hours by doing nothing, but you teach the person how to approach the problem, how to do the code, and later on you will do the review on the code, it will get merged. Your name is not in GitHub, your name is not in the code, but you help that person to do the code. So learn how to delegate and learn how to deliver through the team. Seven one, sharing is caring. Yes, that's my favorite. Uh, I never do any decision that affects my team in terms of work, organization, or some processes before I discuss it with the team. So let's say we are thinking about switching from Sprint to Kanban. First, I, del I ask my team, we talk about it, and if we will find that it's okay, we will switch to the Kanban. The same goes for some way of the meetings, discussing stuff, sharing knowledge, everything. So asking the teams for ideas and opinions is always a good idea, I think. And yeah, I'm not talking only of, for, about the you know, developers. Even when we are discussing new features, how we are going to develop them, documentation and QEs are always involved. We basically don't have anything that is done by just one person well, except the actual development, you know, but the code reviews, documentation, discussing the ideas, everything we are doing with the team together. And it works. I must say that from my personal experience, it really works. Eight one. Time off. Yes. Uh, you must be replaceable, re replaceable, which means that if you are going to live for a longer time, you need to prepare the team for it and what's going to happen. So, share the timelines, share the work that needs to be done, uh, share the meetings, you know, maybe there is going to be some important company meetings, keep them in the sync. Because what I found out, and not just for my team, but also for me, that I absolutely quickly forget any deadlines, timelines, you know, priorities and everything, Share it, share it, tell them, and have a document saying, hey, when I'm time off, this is the stuff that needs to be done, or it will be done, and please take care of it. Oh, five minutes, all right. Um, focus time, oh yeah, that's my favorite. You don't have to be accessible 100% of your time. I know it's difficult because everyone has the device in your pocket, pinging every five minutes, but you don't. For example, when I said in my team, hey, I really don't like, like we have six or seven meetings per day. It's annoying, I cannot focus. How about having, let's say, morning without meetings? From 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. to lunch, no meetings. Everyone was for it. Everyone was like, oh yeah, that's actually a good idea. Let's have a time without meetings. And it's awesome, like really, really great. So I have every day four hours without any single meeting. And quickly it was, uh, and when your managers or anyone for other from other teams ask, hey, can we have meeting? I'm like, nah, it's before lunch. I don't have meetings before lunch. 
And quickly, th that got adopted pretty quickly by other teams. So right now, when I came to work, it's not like, oh my god, what kind of meetings? I don't care about meetings until my lunch. I have four hours every morning to focus and do the really actual work, reviews, coding, team leading, blah, 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 you name it. You also don't have to attend every meeting. That's very difficult for some people, but you don't. Uh, yeah, being part of every decision. Uh, yeah, also, uh, but I found out that some people really like to discuss basically anything. And it was up to that point when they were discussing implementing some VLANs in some data center in India. I'm like, guys, I have no idea what it is. And I'm like, yeah, but you are team leader. You must know about it. I'm like, no. I really don't understand data centers. I don't understand VLANs. I'm not a networking guy. So I could sit there, listen for one hour, and then be like, yeah, that was nice. I know absolutely nothing as before. So, but I have in my team people who actually knows what is happening. And I'm like, fine, that person really knows what is going on, how it's going to be done, and I'm fine with that. Just ping me you know, when it's done and what's the progress. And yes. You don't have to do everything again. Yeah, that's quite important. Responsibilities. What does being a team leader in your company mean? When I had talks with my manager that I told him, yeah, I don't want to be team leader. It's too annoying. Too many meetings, blah, blah, blah. We made a list of stuff that actually means being team leader and what means to be senior developer in the team. And I quickly find out that my view of what team leader means is a little bit different than my manager was actually you know, expecting from me. So I highly suggest, before you get the chance to work as a team leader, sit with your manager, sit with yourself, <laughs> and make a list. And yeah, maybe you will find out that uh, team leader is something that you actually don't want to. You know, probably, that's also an option. So definitely make a list. And if I'm not mistaken, this one is going to be last one, different skills. Yeah, I know that this sounds obvious, but if you remember my first slides was less coding, really expect that your tech skills will go down, like rapidly down, you know? You will see it, you will feel it, and it's not nice feeling, but on the other hand, the People skills go up, which is something that sounds obvious, but it wasn't so obvious for me at the beginning of the, you know, the road. So keep that in your mind, and I will repeat myself, but if you're really, really into tech stuff, coding, this kind of stuff, maybe this will be like blocker for you be, for being a team leader. And then that's all for me. Questions? No, all right. So thank you. If you have any questions or you want to talk about team leading, I'm at the Foreman booth Thursday, Friday. So see you there. Thank you.